820. Welcome back to Fox 43 Morning News. Pennsylvania Senator Pat Toomey will not seek re-election in the 2022 midterms. He does not, however, plan on having a lame duck close to his career. Gun control legislation is something he's been working on for more than seven years. He joins us live this morning on the Fox 43 Capitol Beat to discuss that and hopefully so much more. Uh, Senator, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Morning, Matt. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, you and Senator Manchin of West Virginia have been working on uh, expanded gun control uh, legislation, background checks on commercial handgun sales since the Sandy Hook shooting uh, back in 2013. How much do you view getting this done or not as your ultimate legacy as a senator? Well, first, I, I don't think of it as gun control at all. I'm not in favor of gun control, as I think most people understand it. I'm a big believer in the Second Amendment. I'm a gun owner. I take my son's shooting. Um, what I believe is it's perfectly okay to do background checks to try to make it more difficult for people who shouldn't have firearms from getting them, and that would be violent criminals and dangerously mentally ill people. And that's what the legislation that I've introduced in the past attempts to do. It would broaden background checks to cover all commercial sales, not private transactions, but commercial sales. And uh, look, I've, fortunately, I've been blessed to have a, a number of opportunities to have a number of really significant legislative accomplishments over the um, 10 years that I've been in the Senate. But this would be an important one. I think it would be very constructive if we make it more difficult for dangerous people to obtain firearms. And that's what my legislation attempts to do. Why haven't you been able to get another nine Republican votes on board? And what needs to happen in order for that to happen? Well, we had four Republican votes, which is uh, doesn't get you to nine. Um, and it's not clear how many we have right now. It's been quite a, a number of years since we've actually had a Senate vote on this you know, background checks for commercial sales. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, I'm having discussion with uh, colleagues. Uh, they're constructive. Uh, there are mechanisms by which we could uh, achieve the goal of requiring a background check on commercial sales. So uh, I'm, I'm hopeful. I want to move to infrastructure because your Senate leader, Mitch McConnell, said President Biden is not going to get any support uh, from Republicans for this current infrastructure plan. So asking you, uh, is that true in your mind? Um, is he speaking for you as well? And what needs to change in order for you and others to get on board? Well, look, I have to give them a lot of the Democrats a lot of credit for the genius of how they have mischaracterized and how they uh, label things. You just described his bill as an infrastructure bill, and that's understandable. That's how they describe it. In fact, only a small fraction of it is infrastructure. Most of it is welfare and expanding the size of government, and increasing subsidies in various categories. And a small fraction of it is actually roads and bridges and airports and ports the things that we think of as infrastructure. So I think um, Senator McConnell's point and, and my point would be if President Biden wanted to do an actual infrastructure bill where we increase our already substantial but increase our spend on transportation and the power grid and broadband access and you know roads and bridges and, and building the things that help our economy to grow, uh, we would be very open to that conversation. But when he wants to throw in uh, literally half a trillion dollars uh, to subsidize business in various ways and 400 billion to expand free government sponsored health care and a uh, couple of hundred billion dollars for new housing on top of the hundreds of billions we already spent, those things have nothing to do with infrastructure. I want to move on to voting rights and election reform, which has been such a major topic of late. It's been a major topic since November, and we've seen new laws put in place in Georgia. Wondering if you would support those measures implemented in Pennsylvania. The Georgia election law? I, I, absolutely. I mean, the, the Georgia election law um, is a takes a very modest step to try to ensure some election integrity. For instance, it allows unlimited mail-in ballots for no reason at all, but it asks for some kind of voter identification, like your last four digits of your social security number or a driver's license number or in any number of other ways to simply verify that the person asking for the ballot is in fact who they say they are. This is another case where our Democratic colleagues have wildly mischaracterized Georgia's very modest election integrity law, all so that they can then say, this is why we need the Democrat version of a election takeover bill, which they've introduced in the Senate. Um, that is designed to 
tip the playing field politically so that the Democrats can have permanent majorities. This is very, very insidious, uh, what they're trying to do. The Georgia election law is, is nothing more than a modest step in the direction of election integrity. Well, this is something that, and, and again, I'm speaking for uh, black Americans and communities of color who have said that policies like these make it harder for them to vote. So what is your message to those communities? So, I mean, th th uh, look, I think um, anyone who looks at this bill realizes that that's a ridiculous argument. Do, are we really supposed to believe that African Americans and, and people of color don't drive in America, driver's license? That, and, and even if you thought that, uh, which I don't, I think actually black people do drive. Uh, but even if you did think that, the Georgia law allows for a free government provided identification card so that that's not a problem. So so people have willfully mischaracterized this because they have another purpose in mind, which is to pass this uh, federal legislation to take over elections. But there's nothing about the Georgia law that prevents black and Hispanic and, and brown people and anybody else from voting. In fact, it expands. It makes it it's dramatically easier to vote under the new Georgia law than it ever was prior to the pandemic. And it's easier under the Georgia law than it is in states like Delaware, New York, and Connecticut. Why are we not hearing our Democratic colleagues railing against the governments of New York and Delaware and Connecticut? All right, Senator Toomey, uh, I wish we could go 30 minutes. Uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us this morning on the Fox 43 Capitol Beat. Thanks for having me.